Hi there and welcome back to Icewind Dale. I'm Baron. And I found there is actually a way uh, to get into that house. You don't click on the door, you actually click on the ladder. Oh, but you have to Ready. activate your party first. See? Not here, but here. All right. So, let's go up here. <coughs> and there's a guy. Tom Farrell. I'll handle it. I think we didn't speak to him yet. Why? Welcome to Lonelywood, friends. Your faces don't look familiar to me. Then again, my eyes aren't what they used to be. Heh, <laughs> name's Tom. Tom Farrell. Well, my Tom, I'm Stormfireblade. What do you do in Lonelywood? I drink a lot of ale mostly. Between tank cards, I try to earn a living building boats. Small boats usually. The big ones aren't much use around here. Lots of ice, rocks. What about the boat outside? It's bigger than the others. Oh yeah, I've been working on her for quite a spell. She'll be done in a while. Maybe the young, then young Ned can take you out on the lake. Do it myself, but my eyes aren't too good anymore. What do you know about Lonelywood the Barbarian Thread? Ah, oh, shoot. I never paid much attention to nothing in town. I guess there's some political nonsense going on, but I don't give a hoot. Uh, same goes for this Barbarian talk. They aren't gonna do anything. Why do you think that? Those lumpheads out on the plain been threatening to attack the Tantals for years now. A lot of empty threats, you ask me. Thank you, Tom. Farewell. And he has a few chests. What's in here? A bottle of wine. And in here? Pearl, light crossbow and bolts. What kind of bolts? I don't know. Does Zelana know? Bolts plus two actually. Okay. <coughs> so I guess all that goes in here. Wait a second. I think we still have the genie's flask. Hmm. Well, as long as it stays in the bag, it doesn't matter. But I will put that scroll here in the chest. I don't want to carry it around. Here. Wait a second. Why are you why are you having the troll slayer equipped? Okay, better. Orders. So let's return to the temple Agreed. because I wanna buy something. Because now that I'm rich I have more than half a million gold pieces. Don't have to be stingy anymore. Got it. Um, where was it? No. Oh, that's it. No, that's not it. Didn't he have... Some sort of magical uh, flail, but not this one. Um, that does a lot of damage to under ah, the three white doves. That's what I was looking for. Um, double damage against undead and outer planar creatures. <coughs> so yeah, I will buy that just in case we encounter any undead. Thanks, I have money now, it doesn't matter anymore. Get in here. I'm listening. And out. So, if I remember correctly, I'm the exit it. was here. I guess that's where the grave digger lived. Yeah. Or was it up here? Ah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. You have my attention. Yes. He didn't have anything useful. Agreed. Get out. So the barbarian camp is here. That is 16 hours away. What now? Done. You are not welcome here, Outlander. Away with you. Anger. I'm here to see your leader. Take me to your leader, Earthlings.
what a leader was just waiting behind the door. Well, it's a lot of leaders actually. I thought it was only one. No one sees Wolf Dean without good cause. What do you want of him? I'm a delegate from the Ten Towns. They wish to sue you for peace. So, the spineless fishmongers want peace, do they? I would hardly call them spineless, simply because they have no taste for war. Hmm. If they had any backbone, they'd stand before Wolf Dane themselves, and that they sent a stranger. Uh, how do you know I'm not from the Ten Towns? Your look, your bearing, you are not a city dweller. Anyone with a keen eye can see that. Well, I don't know. We started with level 1 in East Haven, so maybe we are city dwellers. I see. I'd like to see Wolfdin, nevertheless. Very well, I'll take you before him. Come. Oh, now we're actually goose stepping it through the barbarian camp. Awesome. They're quite big, actually. Regular conans. I announce Wolfdale. Blessed and guided by the spirit of Jared, once king of the tribe of the bear, now king of the tribe of the great worm. What worm? Son of Fangar the fearless, slayer of the dwarven spy in single combat with a single stroke of his blade, slayer of the great bear. Enough. Your words honor me, but they are wasted on these outlanders. They know nothing of our ways, and must surely find such things tedious. I would be honored to hear of your deeds, Wolfdeen. Then perhaps at another time you shall. For now, however, I would know why you have come before me. Your announcer said that you are blessed and guided by the spirit of Jared. What did he mean by that? The one known as Wolfdeen died and was laid to rest. As his spirit prepared to leave the shell of his body, he had a vision. Jared, the savior of old, appeared before him. And we get 84,000 experience points. He asked that Wolfdane join with him. He said that together they could return the tribes to their former glory. It was an honor that Wolfdane could not refuse. I awoke that day. I am neither Wolfdane nor Jared, but both joined as one. It is through me that the tribes have come together. Well, as far as I'm, you know, concerned, that Jared guy is still in that plate below that temple. And through me, my people shall rule the north once more. Now, I want to know why you have come to me. Speak, Outlander. I'm a delegate uh, from the Ten Towns. They wish to sue for peace. I was not aware that our peoples were at war. Perhaps the fact that savages have gathered at your doorstep prompted your visit. With respect, Wolfdeen, the tribes have gathered and attacked the Ten Towns before. The people of the Ten Towns wish to avoid any further com future confrontation. With respect? An interesting word for an outlander to use. Is this the same respect shown to us when the Ten Towns stole our lands? The Ten Towns are small and the tundra is large. Surely there is room enough for all to coexist in peace. Room for all? Your civilization has spread across Faerun like a plague of locusts. To the east, west, and south, the land reeks with the stench of your cities. Here in the north, the land remained pure until your people discovered the fish of the lakes. Now your pestilence strikes here as well. What new discovery will lead your people even further into our lands? What other treasures will you steal from us? I guess it's called... Uh, progress what's happening here no there will be no room for my people here you will press on driving us further north until the land ends and the cold kills us hmm. 
You could formalize a treaty with the Tantan, setting limits on any further expansion. We have no interest in treaties or in setting limits. Instead, we will take back what is rightfully ours. Only then will we be safe. It is not the intention of the Tantans to drive the people away, Wolfdeen. So you say, Outlander, but you know nothing of what you speak. My people have already been driven far from their ancestral lands. One only needs to look at a map to see the truth of my words. Our tribes once roamed freely from the spine of the world in the south to the endless sea in the north. Now, we cannot travel south beyond Kelvin's Cairn without your leave. Fully half of our ancestral lands are denied us. I cannot deny your words, Wolfdeen. I can only ask that our two peoples find some common ground to build a foundation of peace upon. Well said, Outlander. So, <coughs> what common ground should we build this foundation upon? Would trade suffice? No. We are a simple people, with nothing that you would find of value. Cultural ties, perhaps? No. We are nomadic in nature, and cannot abide the confining cities in which you thrive. We could get you a nice reservation. Spiritually? No. Even now, our most holy site, Jared Stone, is denied to us. Sealed away beneath an Outlander temple. Outlander temple? Jared Stone lies beneath the Temple of Tempus. Is he not your deity as well? We worship Tempus, not Tempus. Your people have even gone so far as to change his name and deny us even that small link. That's only a name, Wolfdeen. He's still the same god and he is still revered by both peoples. So you feel names and titles have no value, Outlander? To us. A name defines us as a people, and carries with it honor and respect. Yet you would dare to make light of it, even when a god's name is concerned. You insult us. Wilfden, I've tried to reason with you, but you persist in twisting my words. Is there no way we can bring peace between our people? If I believed you to be a delegate of the Ten Towns that you claim to be, then we could come to terms. However, you are not what you seem. Outlander. Okay, and we gained uh, 84,000 more XP for trying to reason with Wolfdain and bring peace to the Ten Towns, which obviously doesn't work. What do you mean? Look at you. Are armor and blades the trappings of a diplomat? I think not. Well, I don't really trust you. It is more likely that you are an assassin sent to slay me, just like the last delegate sent by the Ten Towns. You will find his head outside my tent. I know nothing of an assassin, Wolfdin. I questioned the assassin before he died, Outlander. The Council of the Ten Towns paid him, specifically the Lonelywood representative. Okay, we discovered an, assassin bleh, an assassination plot against Wolfdin. For eight <laughs> 84,000 more XP, it's almost like an Planescape Torment, you get XP for chatting. I'm not an assassin, Wolfdeen. Then you are a spy sent by the Ten Towns to learn of our strengths and weaknesses. In either case, I cannot let you leave this tent alive. Then let's have a fight. Stay your hand, mighty Wolfdeen. These strangers bear our people no malice upon my oath. Oh, there's Yolda. I know this, for it was I who bade them to appear before this council. I see. Tell me, Yolder, why would you do such a thing? Their coming was foretold by a vision. I have been to the other side, great king. The spirits have shown me these heroes and other images that speak the will of Tempas. If Tempas has called these strangers to us, then surely we cannot dishonor ourselves by slaying them within the hallowed halls of Hengoro. Very well. If it is the will of Tempas, then I will hear more of it. Tell me of your vision, Yolder. Why are these outlanders among our people? I... I do not know. The vision was unclear as to what purpose they must serve, but it must... Unclear? You dare to stand before me, speak the will of Tempas, and yet you are unclear as to what our Lord demands of us? How can you wear the mantle of a shaman if his voice does not ring true throughout your very being? 
Well, it rings truer than throughout your being. I will hear nothing more from you, Yoldair. You have failed your people and me. From this day forward, you shall be exiled to the burial isle. Contemplate your failure until you join with our ancestors. As for these outlanders, I will not contest even the flawed vision of a shaman. If it is the will of Tempas that they live, then so be it. Remove them from my sight. And we leveled because we got a lot of XP here. Okay. So Yolda is being exiled. That something is fishy about that king. Hold, Outlander. You you will go no further than this. Wolfdane has ordered your death, and I am to see it done. Excuse me, the will of tempers and things. Is this an example of the honor of the tribes? Were I not a man of honor, I would have ambushed you from behind. Why has he ordered my death? I do not know. It is not my place to question Wolfdane. The shaman Yolda was banished to the burial isle. What will happen to him? The burial isle is a bleak piece. He'll either starve or the cold will kill him. Why can't he just leave the isle? 42,000 more XP. The only way off the isle is by boat and there are none. Were he to try and swim to shore, the water's chill would surely kill him. Where is the burial isle located? It lies in the middle of the lake near Lonelywood. It is some distance from the shore and can only be reached by boat. Hmm. Is it your place to question the visions of a shaman? They are the voice of tempers. Through their wisdom we know his will. I will do not question the will of tempers. The shaman Yolder saw my coming in a vision. He says I am destined for some greater purpose. Yes, I was at the audience when he spoke before Wolfdeen. If it is the will of Tempest that I serve a greater purpose, then attacking me is tantamount to defying him. I... Hmm. You are free to go, Outlander. Leave this place and do not return. I wash my hands of this affair. Very well. Farewell. So, no battle this day. And 42,000 more XP. Awesome. Understood. You're still here? Why have you come yet again, Outlander? I cannot allow you enter here. You must leave. May I ask you some questions? Ask. I'll answer if I can. Who are you? I'm Anger, son of Rag, warrior of the tribe of the wolf. Let me ask you something else. I have no more patience for this. Away with you. Mm, very well. But I could uh, initiate this conversation anew, right? <laughs> May I ask you some questions? Yeah. Wolfdane mentioned an assassin sent by the Ten Towns. What can you tell me about that? An outlander came here, claiming he was a delegate of the Ten Towns. He was granted an audience just as you were. During the audience, Wolfdane claimed the man was an assassin or a spy. What did he do? Wolfdane tortured him. I witnessed what was done to him and were it me, I would have admitted to anything to end the pain. What did he admit to? He claimed the council of the Ten Towns sent him and that the representative in Lonelywood had paid him. He died before he could say what he had paid for being paid for. Okay, so we don't really know whether that was an assassin. Um, do we have anything else? What can you tell me about Wolfdeen? He was king of the tribe of the Worm. He was slain in a battle worthy of a king and laid to rest in the burial isle. He rose from the dead and now claims to be possessed by the spirit of Jared. 42,000 more XP. Do you believe him? He called forth the tribes and laid his claims before us. Our shaman questioned him at length and agreed he knew uh, the life of Jared well. How could he know if he were not Jared? I don't know. I read a book about Jared? Okay. And Storm and Tolpan actually leveled. Ain't that great? So now Storm is a level 16 paladin. He gets three more ex uh, hit points. We don't really get m many hit points at that stage anymore. But he now has a tech of minus two. Ain't that great? <coughs> and a three and a half attacks. But that's due to the ring. It would regularly it would be just two and a half attacks. Tolpan levels two, he gets two more hit points and now finally has the awesome number of one hundred hit points. That's not bad for a thief, I guess. <coughs> okay. 
So that's pretty much all we can do here since we cannot open that gate. What? Let's return to Lonelywood and say that things didn't go as planned. in that house I forgot oh it's the Cooper okay done I'll handle it Where are you? Purvis, what are you doing outside? See? I dig holes good. Who was it that you buried here? I digs hole for a trapper killed in woods. I think him I think some called Digby, he sleeps now. Happy I hole a uh, happy and hole I digs for him. You're not man Purvis, you know that? Huh? Never mind, farewell. Oh, what time? Um let's try something. So obviously someone died. Um, can I pickpocket you? Yeah, I can. Nothing more to steal. What do we get? Out of speed and another ring of reaction. Ready. So, well, if that Digby guy died, let's see uh, what his two remaining brothers have to say to that. <coughs> Where are you? Oh, there. Who lived in here, I wonder? What was that? I can't remember that. They should have put signposts in front of... Oh, this is where the Agreed. mayor lives. Okay. They should have put signposts in front of um, the whole thing. All right. So, here lives the mayor, the representative. Here live the three stooges. Here lives the ranger. This is the temple. This is the inn. Would have made things much easier. So, what do you have I to say, it. my friend? The animals killed Digme. Dugal says if Emmerich didn't stop us from trapping, it wouldn't have happened. I want to kill Emmerich. I'll put him in a bear trap. What happened? Digme went out to check on the traps, and an animal killed him. Dugal says it was a wolf or a bear. He's real smart. Farewell. Wait a second. What do you have to say? You know, a wolf and a bear, they don't appear to be, you know, they look, they don't, don't much look alike. Well, this is exactly what I knew would happen. That jackass Emmerich uh, keeps us from trapping and now some animal rips Digby apart. I swear that weak little ranger's gonna get his neck snapped. What happened? My brother goes out drunk to check the traps the other night and he doesn't come back. I go out with Dolan and we find him dead with his throat torn out. Probably some mad bear. I'm telling you, Emmerich is Emmerich is dead. Okay. Let's talk to Emmerich then. I guess the ranger lived I'll down here. It. <coughs> oh, maybe. Yeah, I guess this is where the. Uh, I don't really know. But here, the this is where the the grave digger lived, and the ranger probably lives down here. Uh. Yeah, but you're not back on the road. Wishing doesn't help you. Get in. Yeah, Done. hi. What do you have to say? Back again? What can I do for you this time? Uh, perhaps you could answer a question for us? We heard that one of the trappers in town was found dead in the forest. Do you know anything about it? Ah yes, Digby. I wasn't surprised to hear an animal killed him. He uh, brought it on himself, you know. I warned him and his brothers about excessive trapping in the forest. Now it seems the forest has exacted its revenge. Is it possible that the same wolf that attacked you is also responsible for Digby's murder? Yes, I believe it's the same great white wolf. Though I would hardly call it murder. I'd say it was more like self-defense. Digby and his brother have taken enough wood pelts to clothe an entire tribe of barbarians. 
Okay. But apparently we didn't settle anything. Maybe later. But we still have to go to uh, the mayor Agreed. and tell him that the negotiations didn't, you know, go as planned. Gather your party before venturing forth. Yeah, I know. Get I'm on it. Up. All right. And there's the representative. Hi. Welcome back, my friends. What can I do for you this day? We have been to the barbarian camp. We know this delegate was an assassin that was hired by the council. Assassin? Don't be ridiculous. Who has been filling your heads with such lies? Drop the egg, Beldemar. We know you're involved in this. Even if these accusations were true, you cannot prove that I had anything to do with it. We'll see. After we've dealt with the barbarian threat, I intend to bring this matter before the council. Alright, alright. It's true. An assassin was hired to kill the barbarian leader. But I swear to you, it was my idea. They made me go along with it. Go on. We're listening. Last month, the council went, uh, met to discuss reports of a new barbarian king who was rallying the tribes to make war on the ten towns. As usual, none of the towns could agree on a course of action. As a matter of fact, the meeting had been adjourned prematurely to prevent arguments from es escalating into fisticuffs. The same night, several of the council members, myself included, met in secret to discuss the matter further. It was during this meeting that the assassination plot was proposed. Of course, I was naturally opposed for such a dishonorable solution, but the others told me I had no choice. They threatened me to uh, threatened to use the influence to remove me from the council if I didn't go along with the plan. I was instructed to return to home at once and say not to say a word to anyone about the plot. They said they would handle the hiring of the assassin and that I need to own that I need only to act as the killer's contract in Lonelywood. Several nights later, the one-eyed stranger showed up at my door. He said only that he was sent by the council and that he was in need of lodging. I was terrified that someone would see us together, so I invited him in. He seemed a decent enough fellow. We spoke a great deal that night, mostly about politics in the Dale, for I was too fearful to bring up the topic of the assassination plot. The next morning he left for the camp and I never saw him again. That's all I know. You've got to believe me. I didn't want to have any part of this assassination business, but I had no choice. The others would have ruined me if I opposed them. Hmm. We believe you, Baldemar. However, you're not entirely blameless. You should have had the courage to stand up for what is right, even if it costs you your seat on the council. I suppose you're right. I have acted like a selfish coward. I should have exposed this treachery before the council when I had the chance. It's not too late to do the right thing. You are, after all, still this town's duly elected representative to the council. You've got a point. I am still a council representative, and as such, I believe it is my duty to report the matter before this entire council at our next meeting. Thank you for making that clear to me. You're welcome, Baldemar. Farewell. And we get 420,000 more XP, which is enough for Goldmoon to level. Yeah, it's really like Planescape Torment here. No battling, just talking. 127 to 129. No weapon proficiencies? Um, yeah, but, but I guess, I don't know, but I guess um, a cleric can only have one weapon proficiency point, so we're probably not going to get any more. But she probably gets new spells. Yes. Oh, wait, did he get new spells? He leveled. Yeah, he gets new spells. Awesome. Another dispel. <coughs> What's that? Unfailing endurance. This spell restores the stamina of the creature touched, bringing back the energy lost from a day and a half of exertion. Note that this may not be sufficient to bring their character out of the fatigued state. Hmm, not half bad, I must say. We can cure fatigue. Why didn't I do that in the past? Hmm. Remove, remove, remove. Ding, ding, 
thing. Now we have four of those. Anything else? Yeah, another one of those. Oh, that's the end. Actually, I never used that. I should use the Holy Word every now and then to see what it does. Okay. Here. Get the fuck out. Where was the exit? Yeah. All right. And if we are going to go to the Got burial it. aisle now, we probably have to fight a lot of lots of undead here. So I guess it's a good idea to put out the three white doves. Although it reduces the armor class somewhat. <coughs> Orders? Um, well, it looks like the boats are here. So it's still a while for Storm to level again. Quite a long while for Zardana to level, but I gave you all the spells you can have. Okay. Yeah, sometimes I forget to give them new spells after they leveled, but we should be fine now. Huh? Where's that guy? Here. Hi. Young Ned. Ahoy, mateys. What can Young Ned do for you now? Um, can you take me to the burial aisle, young lad? Aye, wait, no. <coughs> uh, what do you be wait wanting to? Why you be wanting to go out there for? What you be wanting to go out there for? Only the dead be on that aisle, and they aren't moved on just yet. Uh, if you get my meaning, it's very important, young lad. Fine, fine. I suppose I can take you. Do you want to leave right now? Yeah, no time like the present. And here we are. Great. But it's late, so I will take a break here. And I, we will continue this in the next video. So all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.